advantages. It's in the sense that there's a lot of draw power, you do gotta love that, and spells are just amazing. And if you have Naturia Beast <laughs> to stop those spells in a format, uh, you're in a really good spot. And his opponent, as we can see there, is on uh, Purely. Um, so yeah, after finding like no Purely for most of day one, now it's raining cats. And there's no dogs in Purely, but ju just cats. Lots there's, of cats. Uh, there's Runic Jerry. There's Runic Jerry. <laughs> raining cats and one dog. Uh, that's a pretty good start here. Runic Tip is the searcher for the Runic archetype. And so you get to, uh, you know, dig that's in the best. for it. It's easily the best card, isn't it? Yep. Because it just it's, it's any card you want, plus a free Runic spell in your graveyard. Yeah, so you want to get as many of these Runics into your grave as possible to resolve that fountain. At turn one, for that draw three, and it looks like we've hard opened the fountain here, which is generally pretty decent, especially if we can go for a discard of another runic spell, uh, which we definitely have. I think it was the destruction that we added out here. Yeah, it's nice because it lets you get that uh, the chain block in, as players sometimes affectionately refer to it. Okay, so it's not going to discard a runic spell, and instead we're going to uh, discard Kurikara. Not so useful when you're going first. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, it's good to have that utility of like, if you need to discard a card anyway, you can afford to play these cards that are aimed at going second, and then you still have a use for them going first, which is just discarding them for your Hoogan. I played a decent amount of uh, Sprite Runic personally, and I think one of the B sort of advantages is the fact that if I like to play, like for example, evenly matched. I was quite a fan mm -hmm. of that, and so it's a good use because worst case scenario, it's a discard, you yeah. know? so you don't really too worry too much about it. And no access to Naturia cards, it looks like. We're just going to have to go with all the fateful destruction and, I guess, uh, trying to draw into more Runic cards to stop our opponent with an Effect Negate, the Pulp of Flashing Fire, mm -hmm. and I guess you can protect a body with your Slumber. Uh, spell and Trap Destruction is pretty relevant as well. Yeah, especially against Pearly. Yeah, it's, it's a very useful card. Is that a sleepy memory that uh That was, was a there? sleepy memory. Yep, we're going to go for Pearly now. Cut of the deck, and this excavates three. Mm -hmm. There we go, delicious. Straight into delicious there. That's pretty good. All right, Smiting Storm. And is that's a Dispelling. A Dispelling, yeah. yeah, yeah it so loops one out of the hand, right? Yeah, so if your opponent adds a card from their hand that's not in, except in the draw phase. So I, I don't know if this is the draw phase, actually. Um, yeah, because players typically, like as a, as a habit, if you can activate an effect in the draw phase, then you kind of should, um, because that way you can't be affected by draw lockbird and mm -hmm. also runic dispelling. But sometimes players miss that with runic dispelling because it's not a, like normally when you read like except in the draw phase, it means like except for your like normal draw for the turn. So you're not allowed to activate it when your opponent just draws for turn. But also, I think it just says you can't activate it in the draw phase. So, but James is just emptying his hand anyway of the things he doesn't want to be discarded, <laughs> which is a fair approach. Like you might as well get the sort of value of uh, the discard by using them immediately since you know you're going to lose that card out your hand regardless. Yeah. So you're going to lose one card but if you like use all the cards you want to use first then yeah for sure. So this is a chain so those two cards were banished for the runic dispelling and now there'll be a chain of Pearl Lily and Purely itself. Um, we will see, I look like the freezing curses came down on the Lily, that makes the most sense to me. Lily adding the uh, my friend potentially is uh, definitely not something you want to do, right? Let your opponent resolve that. Yeah, exactly. It's also got the most powerful like graveyard effect. Uh, oh, sorry, the most powerful um, uh, rank up effect, if you like, because it can attach from the graveyard, so you don't have to use the resource of a card in your hand. I'm uh, genuinely wondering if the uh, it's sort of like, oh, did we hit another delicious? That was a happy. A happy? Very happy. But Thomas is looking very happy himself here. He's going to get to draw three cards. I mean, nothing brings a smile to the face of a Yu-Gi-Oh player like drawing three cards. Yeah, two is usually the, uh, the standard, I think, right? In terms of uh, the old reference to the card that shall not be named. But three is uh, pretty decent, too. And of course, uh, you know, you want to get deeper and deeper there so that we can finally see that Naturia engine, since, unfortunately, we weren't really able to set up Nat Beast turn one, which was... Oh, yeah, I, I suppose mean, the whole win condition of this archetype. The PLE deck runs a, a lot of spells. Yeah. <laughs> so going for Princess Sprite. Old school card, Princess Sprite. It takes two level ones, you can detach and excavate a card. And I think if it's a spell or trap, you can add it to your hand. Is there any reason we're not just going straight into our pearly line? Uh, oh, wow. 
hits a uh, triple talents off the top there. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, good for Thomas not to he was just not use any uh, spells and traps. I guess you might as well use the sprite first because it gives you more you know information before you make whatever your next play is. So purely he's got happy memory, and um, so you, that means you'd have to upgrade into E purely happy. You can't um, you can't you have to upgrade depending on which spell you're using to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, you have to make happy. Happy is is not the um, that's is the, it is happy? That the, am I making the am is I that the searcher the one? Up? Yeah, so it has to attack. So it's, yeah. it's not the most useful when you're going first, but when you're going second, it's definitely one of the better ones because it can search cards after it attacks. I think it's pretty strong specifically into the Hugin, right? Just because you know it's a defense position monster that doesn't really yeah, yeah. affect you at all. So you're always going to be guaranteed to get a decent amount of attack in without too much risk of losing your monster. As we were mentioning, this is like another reason that it's really important to have your monsters in attack position where possible against purely because it stops, you know, you don't want to give them an easy attack either for the happy or to upgrade into a Zeus. I mean, in this case, it's uh, got zero attack in defense, so you might as well have it in defense mode. But if your monster's in any way like beefy, you should probably put it in attack. You know, just as a concept of the runic cards, I find it sort of really, I mean, it's a super powerful idea that all of these cards all do the same thing. Like every single runic activates an effect, especially some from the extra deck, and then those extra deck monsters are like threefold choices. And on top of that, you have all of these other effects, like your destruction, your interruption, your utility, your versatility. But there's a third effect of the runics, and that's the banishing off the top of the deck. Now, a couple of those resolving is probably in, like you know irrelevant, but after a while, especially after a good back and forth of multiple turns, you start to lose a lot of resources off the top of your deck here. There's a dark pillar yeah. coming down from Thomas. Um, I wonder if, uh, I'm just curious if in the long term that can be a real detriment to Pearly. It definitely can, because the Pearly they only have six you like main deck monsters that you really like well as in like the only kind of there are hand traps obviously in Nibiru's and things like that but the only main deck monsters that it runs are the six purely monsters so and they do go through them quite fast as we saw there there were there were three in play right already so and a couple got banished so once you run out of those main deck monsters then your spells don't have anything to summon and that is enough. because once you establish noir it's really actually quite difficult to out and on top of that it's very hard to maintain the advantage because Noir spinning your fountain is that's sort of game over almost, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, it can be, I mean, it's a very powerful boss monster. I guess a lot of decks, you need to have kind of a specific answer, maybe something like Noir is comparable to maybe a Rise Heart from Kashtira or an Acheria Beast from Thomas. Like you need to, if you don't have a good answer to it. All right, if we're comparing Rise Heart to Naturia Beast, we know that that card has stood the test of time, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Naturia Beast, you know, in Naturia Beast in trap form has, uh, has been banned. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's the Turbius in trap form? Imperial Order. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I thought you were just talking about Markian. Oh, Markeon. not Australia Markian. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Do you think that they swapped the levels around that would have like had a massive no. historical difference? Um, I feel like five is like a very specific number because it's a, it's a normal summon level four and a one tuner, right? That just feels easier to make than a six. Um, maybe. I mean, I guess in this deck specifically, you don't have the Earth... Level I'm sorry two. to get tied down in the multiverse of uh, potential hypothetical Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. card design of what like, <laughs> society if Naturia Beast was level six, you know? Like yeah, it's probably easier in this deck because the cards your like your best cards are Mole Cricket and uh, I'm gonna say the name wrong, Camellia. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, th this deck is probably more convenient to make a Naturia Beast, but I mean the deck runs Barky on it can make Barky on pretty happily. Yeah, they were pretty much like designed to uh, have these runics in mind, I feel like. Well, maybe not necessarily, because Sacred Tree is ancient, right? It's an old card. Uh, yeah. And it works non was per turn, and it synergizes so well with the runics, because you That's... discard for cost multiple times, you just get all these searches. Yeah, for sure. Focusing up on James's turn here, this is a great turn one. I mean, I don't think you can ask for better here. And he's got the trap card, so this is a potential draw six. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, sort of pearly engine in the, uh, the get-go? Draw, draw six is ambitious, but draw, yeah, draw a good Hypothetically. Few. Hypothetically. So Sleepy Memory is the card that Nadir's talking about. So when all of the purely quick play spells grant whatever um, they are attached to an extra effect. And one of them is Sleepy Memory, and if you attach that, then during your opponent's standby phase, you get to draw a card. 
Uh, but purely memory, it's, uh, sleepy memory itself is not once per turn. So if you have multiple, you can draw two cards. So if I have two of them under the same purely monster, then I can draw two cards. And the purely trap card, purely eep. Um, <laughs> it's just called eep, I think. Isn't it Run. pure 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 leap? I mean, maybe it's pure leap. Pure leap. Yeah. Pure leap. Yep. Um, pure leap. Okay. Anyway, when, uh, here's plump uh, for it, the uh, multiple materials. Yeah. It lets you kind of rank up, if you like. Uh, one of these rank twos into a rank seven purely monster. And if you do that in the standby phase, then it's a new monster with those sleepy memories attached. So then you can trigger those sleepy memories again and draw even more cards. So if you have two sleepy memories under your purely monster, then you get to draw two, and then you can use the trap card and then draw two more. And we're going to resolve all three copies of OG original pearly here for uh, multiple hits off the top of the deck here. I don't know if we've actually managed to get a sleepy. There's one. Okay. Did get a sleepy finally. The uh, He's gonna put those on the bottom of his deck. Hopefully, our table. Yeah, will that should him. go. Those those went to the graveyard there. Yeah. So if our <laughs> judges could clarify that. That's really important. Easy thing to do. Like you're just, you know, I don't think it's in intentional or anything like that. Oh, Thomas has yeah, caught, it, caught for it there. Us. Yeah, yeah. The uh, plump does not have any sleepies under it, does it? Does it have one? Yeah. So when you activate, it, this is a, one of those very rare instances where it says up to thrice per turn. <laughs> uh, so up to three times a turn, if you activate a purely quick play, then you can chain uh, a purely rank two. So in this case, plump, and it will attach the quick play spell after it's resolved. So that's where they can get even more materials. But plump itself, it, it, yeah, I suppose it's in the name that it eats the materials uh, from the graveyard. <laughs> Gets very fat with X Y Z materials. It's getting very plump. Um, so it, it itself, that's why it's probably the most popular one to start with, because it lets you take all of those uh, spells that you've invested and attach them. Prince of Sprout unfortunately missing the spell trap, so instead, uh, because it revealed a monster, it just gets sent straight to the grave. And there we see a very large noir. <laughs> Thomas just counting and saying, how many, how many does that have? Uh, <laughs> if you have the pure, pure Lee Yep here, is there a point in making the noir here? Um, you, don't, you don't get as many draws now, right? Yeah, so if you use the the, the yip, you want to call it, <laughs> <laughs> um, then the monster is uh, is returned to the deck during the next end phase, returned to the extra deck. So this sort of establishes it forever. Okay. Um, is that a destruction that's coming out here? Tom was just electing to read the My Friend Purely in the Graveyard rather than the one on the field. <laughs> uh, maybe I mean sometimes players just for fun have cards of different languages in their deck, so it might be that's the case. Or it might just be like don't want to disturb the field, whereas looking at your opponent's graveyard is easy. Uh, that's a Kurikara. Does Kurikara tribute? Can okay, that was uh, it. Does tribute noir? Oh yeah, of course it tributes noir. That's amazing. I mean you can only do it if there was a card drawn or the effect was activated, which it looks like it was. Yeah, so it's the Sleepy Memory that activates as part of the effect of Noir, technically, right? Yeah, yeah, Sleepy Memory gives the effect to Noir. Wow, that's incredible. That's, uh, that's huge. But, I mean, it's not, so it's not like game ending, right? Because like, usually people have the impression that, oh, okay, well, my big crazy boss monster got tributed for cost by like a Kaiju. Uh, the effect of the My Friend Pearly on the, on the field there allows you to add back three quick yeah, plays. Yeah, it's amazing, like the kind of recursion that it, it offers. So if you can deal with it, like it just as if it's sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card, so that could be by battle, or in this case by simply being tributed, um, then you get to add three. Which, I mean, like adding three back, that's, that's so much gas for next turn. Yeah. But James not not too upset to see this. Yeah, so in, in, the, in the long term sense of the duel here, it's not too bad. Uh, but I would probably be really scared if Thomas was playing like a very sort of aggressive deck, maybe like a, like a super heavy or something. I think if I was to have my most security car, I'd, I'd very much risk like losing that turn. Uh, but with Runix, you know, no battle phase even. Um, so establishing um, a field of Naturia Beast could be, uh, could be deadly just by itself. I was thinking that because, you know, three spells, it doesn't matter how many spells you have, your opponent has Naturia Beast, unless they have enough, like, more spells than you have cards in your deck, right? Yeah. <laughs> deck out the Naturia player for a change. Um, so Camellia also has this really amazing replacement effect. Yeah. So when you use your, uh, when you use your Naturia monster, you can pay the cost of it instead of tributing. Uh, you can just mill the top two cards of your deck, uh, which works really well with the other Naturia card that I think you play, which is Sun Sunflower. Yeah, exactly. So you essentially can get like two negates as well. Is he playing Sunflower? Actually? Yeah, yeah, he is. It's in the top left there. Oh, right, his very first card. Um, so mo most players run like one Sunflower, three Cricket, three Camellia, and like tributing with Sunflower as well. It's not once per turn, um, so that can catch people out sometimes. I think. 
because like normally like you, you have to attribute two monsters to activate it which is quite a hefty requirement so like the idea of resolving that multiple times is very hard but if the first time rather than attributing two monsters you just mill two cards then you've still got sunflower um, and you can still activate its effect again so stardust charge warrior you're just maintaining and granting more card advantage sacred tree discard with the search with the fountain and basically this is a really commanding spot by Thomas. All he really needs to do is establish Naturia Beast, and I think he's going to be in a very, very powerful position. Mm. I think I think I saw him add the Naturia uh, quick play spell that will allow him to summon back an extra Camellia. So he'll be able to get a Naturia Beast and a Baronda Fleur. Mole Cricket's effect is uh, revive itself if your opponent controls a monster? Uh, no, so its effect is if somebody special summons a monster from the extra deck then including you yourself yeah uh, so you have to summon an Acheria synchro to bring it back but if your opponent summons anything from the extra deck you can bring it back all right Naturia beast plus fountain and if thomas has any one other runic spell i think it's going to be it's at least draw two right there should be a couple in there right. oh yeah he's, he's got at least two i think he used the freezing curses and he used the destruction and now it's back over to James, and he's got to hope he's got some way to deal with this Naturia Beast, because purely spells by themselves are clearly not, not going to do the trick. Did uh, Thomas forget the optional effect of Kurikara? Maybe he just didn't want anything. So he may yeah. have forgotten it as well. Oh, okay. I was going to say... Uh, oh, that's a... <laughs> I was going to say that's a good top deck. Sleepy's usually good, but maybe not Naturia Beast. Oh, it's a Droll in the hand as well. Um, so the reason I was... I got a little concerned there when I saw that Princess Bright detach because I assumed we were maybe just going to try establish a Zeus now. That's fair. I mean, what you can do uh, is rank up the Princess Sprout in your main phase two into a download magician. That's true. All right, there is Camellia being special summoned out of the deck here from Mole Cricket. Do you not get to special summon Sunflower as well? Uh, so if you can, if your opponent has the highest attack point monster, oh, then it's based you get on attack two points. Monsters, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you, do, uh, yeah, if you have the highest attack point monster, then you do not. So James has fortunately got some purely monsters to play with, so he doesn't have to rely on his spell cards. They're just making a chain here. So when your opponent summons a monster while you control Camilla, then Camilla's effect will activate and let you special summon a Naturia monster from your graveyard. So that's what was, uh, Thomas was doing. And then in response, using the monster that was just summoned, EPOLI Beauty, Thomas was trying to negate the Camilla, prevent the Mole Cricket from coming back. And here we go. This is very much looking like a Zeus, uh, as you predicted. Zeus angle against uh, Runic is, I suppose, one of the only ways you really have to deal with the multiple disruptions, as well as the floodgate effect of Naturia Beast. There he is. It's interesting. I, I'm not sure why he would be using it over the what. Like he could, he could have had a four material Zeus rather than a two material Zeus. Going to put it over his beauty there, the downer and the and the Zeus. Mm. But he doesn't look like he was that interested in using it this turn, given the number of cards that he's setting. Yeah. Why do you think we're not just Zeusing and then playing again? Uh, well, he, I guess he wants to kind of hold the Zeus. I don't think he thinks he needs it um, to activate it this turn. And that is fair. Like, Thomas has got a lot of monsters, but the only one that's really doing much proactively is that Naturia Beast. And the Naturia Beast can be answered by the uh, happiness that's underneath... Uh, sorry, not happy memory. Pretty memory that's underneath beauty. So I guess it's fairly heads up. Like, he can have the Zeus as a bonus. He doesn't even need it um, to win the game. Well, it's looking like... Uh this turned out to be quite a hard matchup for, for Naturia Runic. I know that first game looked quite convincing, but even with the tools to go second here, Pearly's not actually done too bad of a job playing through Naturia Beast. Mm. Just got to remember that he is under Droll and Lockbird, I believe. Um, Did we add anything just now? That was a Pearl Lily that resolved, right? Yeah, so he just special summoned the Pearl Lily, so you can't add the Pearl Lily. Again, and Drawn Lockbird is like easy thing to forget. Like if it's you know you've taken like five or six actions this turn after the Drawn Lockbird, and there's like four cards hiding it on top of it in the graveyard. <laughs> he didn't add anything, so he's he's well aware. Um, but yeah, it's definitely easy thing to do. Um, 
All right, Plump is going to uh, start stacking Plump up. Plump's going to get large, yeah. Yeah, stacking up those materials so, here. As I, as I mentioned before, you can actually take things from your opponent's graveyard. So, I mean, sometimes you'd much rather have those purely spells. But one thing you could do, for example, is to take your opponent's uh, runic cards out of their graveyard and attach them to your plumps, and they can't be shuffled back to draw you any extra cards. So many utility cards that you can take out of your opponent's grave. You know, Mole Cricket, for example, it's on the field now, but just as a way to cut off your opponent's flow of resources, there is just so many cards and many archetypes that kind of build advantage from the graveyard. So uh, You have to take spells and traps, unfortunately. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. Spells and traps also included. If it took monsters, that would be insane. <laughs> that would be, uh, okay. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a huge noir. Um, so that, so the plump, all of the uh, uh, purely monsters, when they attach a material, so I mentioned before that when you attach a material, um, when you this activate a quick, so it's, huge. it's a very plump, plump, <laughs> isn't it? When you attach a, uh, a, a material that, uh, by activating quick play spell, they all give you like a bonus effect when you do that. So uh, plump lets you banish a monster until the end phase, so it makes sense just to banish that Kurikar until the end phase and it will come back with its original 1500 attack rather than the 3000 it had before. So it's a pretty minor thing, but you might as well reduce the attack of your opponent's monster by 1500, even if they can't attack with it because they're playing a runic deck. Yeah, a soft reset like that goes a long way, I suppose. Okay, Kaiju. Kaiju. I mean, it kind of had the same outcome as last turn where we add back all these cards, but I suppose dealing with the uh, dealing with the Noir is really important because spinning the Fountain is going to be quite detrimental, but at the same time, Thomas is so low on cards. When yeah, he's only got the one card left in hand, so it can't be Fountain and a Runic spell. <laughs> and James is more than happy. He's going to get to add back three more, I believe. I'm not 100% sure of this ruling, but that's luckily for us, we have uh, table judges. Because it my friend purely says uh, when your opponent, yeah, you lose a purely monster by your opponent's card, and uh, obviously, like the kaiju is kind of your card <laughs> by the time it's on your field, <laughs> even though you don't want it to be. Like it's a, it's very much an imposter, but uh, it is, it is yours. Uh, but yeah, I think I, James and Thomas seem to know the ruling better than me, which is good. Blessing for uh, Camellia, which uh, is going to be attached on here? No, it just gets negated. Okay, it's just negating it yeah. with the... Uh, all right, and then... James not messing around. Too, like... <laughs> You've got no cards left on the field, so... And no, no cards in the hand, so we're going to get rid of basically everything. Uh, so Thomas down to pretty much nothing, with the exception of the, the only kind of resources he has is a couple of runic spells in his grave and that uh, mole cricket in his grave, but probably not enough. James has got a healthy size hand there. Do you feel like that Zeus was necessary? Um, I guess it wasn't necessary, not, but... but like, I guess it's just sort of crossing the I's and dotting the T's all the other way around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> crossing the I's, dotting the T's. Yeah, you're going to have some strange looking uh, I's and T's there, but... Um, you're writing in hieroglyphs there. Yeah, I, I guess like the only thing that I could see Thomas doing was making a Baron de Fleur, um, which may have answered most of James's board, so I guess why not get ahead of it. Per Lily, four spells is like the dream setup here, really. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, yeah, I, this is going to be very difficult for Thomas to get out of. Um, so he's got a mole cricket, and that's that's basically it. We talked uh, a little bit about the uh, discard engine that Pearly has on offer at the start, and I think a theme we've seen, at least so far at this uh, tournament, is every Pearly player we've taken a look at, um, none of them play a discard engine. They just play all the Pearly cards, all the requirements, and then just an entourage of hand traps mm -hmm. and defensive cards. Why do you think that is? Why do we just do we do we not like using dark worlds? Do we not like searching with snow? What's well, the issue? Well, I asked him now, and he said he was in particular afraid of like dimension shifter hmm. um, because these are just more cards. Like the purely cards all do like going to the graveyard and can be fished out again with plump and stuff like that. And like, my friend purely, so dimension shifter is pretty annoying. And then the discard engine will only be active, like it will be it just loses harder too. Yeah, it's more cards that are very affected by dimension shifter. So that's possibly a reason. Um, in general, I think it's great to maintain resources and summon a bunch of purely monsters from the deck. There might be some players use the term like win more. So it's like if you're already playing and you've, you know, you've got access to all of your engine, it's great then you can do even more things if you have this discard engine. But you'd rather like, you know, win by just enough <laughs> than win more. And that way you have those, that extra consistency to play going a second. Um, make sure you draw hand traps instead of like a, a shadow or a snow, which obviously can't interrupt your opponent. 
I think that when you're in a, uh, a dueling situation that provides all kinds of situations of your opponent having negates or uh, banishes, basically when the game is so sort of pivotal within the first couple of turns, you need as many of your cards to be live as possible at any one time. And so something like a hand trap is more often and more likely to be live, especially in a situation where you lose a dice roll, uh, than something like the draw engine and such. Yeah. And so to be able to guarantee that you at least have a chance of playing at any one time during a duel, then hand traps are just always going to be, I suppose, more live and more consistent at dealing with threats than discard engine would be. At least sure. maybe not in a situation where the, the meta was cash tira and you have to establish like a graveyard. Yeah, yeah. Um, I totally agree. So Thomas there using his one mole cricket. I don't know, you do often run out of Maturia cards. <laughs> it's a very easy thing to do. And you often run out they of They loop each other quite well. well, don't they? Sorry? They loop each other quite well, right? Yeah, like, but once they go out of the deck, they're never going back into the deck. So yeah. you run out of cards in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we got Sunflower and walling up with our final copy of Camellia, I think. Oh, can mole cricket summon mole cricket? It can, yeah. One of the few cards that do that. I, I guess mean, it's, it's not like you can only use the effect of it once per turn, so. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not like <laughs> I, making a five monster field yeah, on your opponent's like a wall of zero attack monsters is not <laughs> very threatening, um, and these can be like tidied up by he's got the um, pretty memory attached to beauty, he's got the happiness which can just attack over any of the um, over just, the Just think about the amount of advantage we'd be able to build here if we can mole cricket for double tomato or cherry or <laughs> what's the floating one. <laughs> Yeah, you're pushing me here. I remember the wall. Oh, uh, double... Uh, d wasn't there like a dupe lock of sorts for Naturio? I, c I can't remember. Maybe. I I, is it Dragonfly? Naturio had a lot of ways to stop your opponent from doing things. So I think that was the, the whole... Yeah, the, that was the, the whole thing. gimmick. Was uh, They uh, they work very similarly to like... I want to say like Ice Barriers. You know, they have all these like weird restrictions when you have multiples on the field. I think Bamboo Shoot was the... That was like the... Shoot? Yeah, that's that like was, the, the quote-unquote good one. Right. That was unbelievable. Card. How does it work again? Your opponent can't if set. If you tribute summon it by tributing a, a Naturia monster, then your opponent can't activate spells and traps. Spells and traps, <laughs> it wow. It just can't be activated. It's actually crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 2,000 attack though, so I don't know. I'm not sure how good that would be today, especially with special unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so James is quite far ahead here, and I'm just wondering if maybe potentially Thomas is being cognizant of time. I, I don't know how well this runic deck performs uh, when it gets close to timeout. Um, pretty well. Pretty well, you think? Yeah. And not it's, having uh, a battle phase is a bit of a disadvantage. Surely. It doesn't matter, right? Because of Munin effect. I suppose. Yeah, he's running one copy of it. I was thinking. I was wondering whether players uh, run it in their um, run it in their extra deck. Depends on how much space you have, I guess. Our timer here is uh, fast approaching the single digit mark here, and Thomas is still maintaining to uh, remain within. Um, <laughs> James you know, this is game here. showing off there. So you attached all three. Uh, <laughs> all three delicious. So now there's is, like... Is that like four attacks or something? Uh, no, no. So delicious is the one that gives your monster extra attack. For okay, so it's, it's three has. multiplied by the number of materials multiplied by three? Am well, I, it's, it's my last <laughs> round. So he's got five materials and each, each delicious gives it 300 attack per material. Okay. So each delicious that it has under it gives it 1500 attacks. So, so in this case it's got... 45 like, plus? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there's only two delicious, so it's 3,000 plus whatever its base attack is, which I want to say it's 1,500 <laughs> as well. It might be 1,600, I'm second guessing myself. So it's got about, about 4,500 attack. Yeah, okay. Enough. <laughs> 2,000 life points, set pass from Thomas here. And 2,000 life points and a dream. We just have to go to directly to the battle phase here and attack. Okay, we're going to use this to set. Tip for the search. <laughs> just ash the ash tip. The tip. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, that's probably game. <laughs> All right, yeah. Sort of a finished duel, per se. I think it's going to be really just down to who can create a deficit and life points. I mean, has Naturia Runic ever finished a duel? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. We got Mole Cricket. Win by Ash concession. Blossom, however. Huge. Ash Blossom on Mole Cricket is and devastating. And no Runic cards to play through that. That's really unfortunate. And a Feather Duster comes down from James here. That's a there can be only one. Oh, That's wow. huge. James is kind of looking up. Uh, you Thomas is not looking very happy about that. No, Thomas is really upset here. Not at all. Oh, wow. Yeah, Thomas has a sacred tree in his hand. And Got a Droll maybe coming down. Yeah, Droll and Lockbird on the resolution of the Perlily here, getting for my, getting the my friend. 
Is there anything else you can add with Parallelly to maybe like play around Droll? Because um, a search card, adding a search card feels sort of, you know, not yeah. great into Droll. It depends what you need. Like if you have purely spells and traps, that you know, if you you need you need to get access to some quick play spells somehow. So if you don't have any, you kind of there's nothing else you can do really. Like you need it, but there are other targets for it. So there's the trap purely Eep and the field spell, which uh, purely Street, which is not in the list. So I can't get over the way you say that. Purely Eep. Purely purely Eep. <laughs> Maybe it's supposed <laughs> to be purely Eep. I, 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 purely Eep. Well, okay, one way to right. play around Feather Duster on your There Can Be Only One is to have another copy of There Can Be Only One. And that's looking very annoying. But has James got a response? He's got a Chain Book of Moon, so he will get to search. Um, I'm assuming he's doing that so he can... I, oh, oh no, this is very heads up. Can you see what's about to happen here? Yeah, I was actually going to point out that I'm not sure if I would have maybe played into my normals. Oh, okay. Well, I suppose he doesn't need to throw it out just yet, but he does have a lightning storm in the hand. Yeah, that's very, like, strange. I assumed he was doing that exactly so that he could activate lightning storm, but then didn't yeah. activate the lightning storm. Now, so. th the danger here is that he hasn't used lightning storm to clear that there can be only one, because I'm assuming what he wants to do is gain more value over the course of the next turn with more, like, sets or whatever that Thomas establishes. But the problem is that if Thomas gets to the runic engine, then Hugin's going to be online, and Hugin is going to stop lightning storm. Yeah. I'm interested there. I thought he was playing the Book of Moon specifically to, just to prepare to activate Lightning Storm. Um, I feel like that's the only reason you would use Book there, right? Was to make yeah, sure Yeah, I mean, otherwise he's just like set his own monster and... Didn't really do anything with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I also, I don't know how much there can be only one restricts the Naturia player. Um, how many defense does that have? I thought it had like a hundred. Isn't it like 2,000? Is that 2,000? When did this happen? I'm not is sure it, if it's exactly to that. I know it's large. Is it purely itself that only has like 100 defense? Um, I know they have like very, very tiny attack, maybe even 100. Actually, yes, 100 attack because Thomas is on 79. <laughs> but he should have taken more damage, right? Uh, Thomas should have taken more damage here, maybe. I'm sure the judges are on the life points and they've gotten it correct. So. Here we see a very rare, like, just activating Naturia Sacred Tree as yeah. a trap card. That doesn't happen often. Yeah. I think the last time I've maybe seen this resolve with the on-field effect is uh, it, it randomly works kind of okay in trap tricks. <laughs> so you can tribute a, an Earth Plant and Special Summon an Earth Insect, or you can tribute an Earth Insect and Special Summon an Earth Plant. Yeah. Is there a way we can get it off the field for a search? Ah, I mean, it's doing quite a lot here. Yeah, no, I mean, in, in general, it's... it's oh, you can just... Uh, Send with Camila here for a sacred tree to get another search. And this is really strong. We're into our uh, Naturia engine. Still no runics, but I think once you establish Naturia Beast, if you can make this stick, that's going to be absolutely massive. Yeah, I don't know if... Oh, hang on, Naturia Beast is a beast. It mm. makes you, like, question all of your, like, what, what type everything is when someone flips there can be only one, you know? Because Mulcra gets an insect, Camilla's a plant. And then you um, go into a beast, right? I think it's all beast legal. Is a, beast is a beast, I would guess. Yeah. Barkion's a dragon. What's exterior? <laughs> exterior? A fusion oh. of a beast and a dragon. What do you get when you fuse a beast and a dragon? <laughs> it sounds like the start of a very weird joke. <laughs> a beast and a dragon walk into a bar. Oh, okay. We're going to go Naturia Blessing, bringing back our Mo Cricket. And here we go. Naturia Beast. Like a beast is coming out. Yeah, there it is, Naturia Beast negating any spell that James is going to activate on uh, the rest of this duel here to negate for the small cost of milling two cards, which, by the way, is actually really good for uh, <laughs> I was going to say, is that Runic. a cost? <laughs> is it a cost, actually? I mean, it is a cost, but, you know, yeah. is it really a cost yeah. or is it a bonus? Um, yeah, like cards, you know, people, are, people are in, often include cards in their deck specifically to mill cards. <laughs> So paying it for cost is not really an issue. You can hit trees, you can hit runic spells, all of which we're very happy to do. Now this is really important for Thomas here as uh, we are halfway through the uh, duel here. You know, we start with 10 minutes, we're on five minutes left here and uh, we've established ourselves in the lead here with some direct damage. And that's, I think, uh, a very comforting position for Thomas to be in because uh, I think he's gonna be quite happy to activate any runic a uh, spell that he might pick up now. Oh, this was a bit of a mistake from Thomas here. Oh, <laughs> the zoning issues! <laughs> Easy to do near timeout, but it's always something you've got to be aware of when you're playing against the purely deck. 
but that zone directly under either of the extra monster zone is very vulnerable to that relinquished anima. Yeah, but Thomas is going to try to do something about it here with bringing out the Mole Cricket, activating to quick synchro away the Naturia Beast. Oh, is that a... Wait, hang on, is that... What are we making here? I don't even know. Oh, it's a floor. Oh, Baron the Floor, okay. I thought it was Trishula. No, don't put it in that, that zone. Come on, just put it, in, <laughs> <laughs> put it in a zone that's like not near... I mean, there's probably only one relinquished anima, but you know, you just had... Unless the anima is so important that we're playing two because of Cash Uh James' body language has completely changed. He went from like looking absolutely crushed after the first turn to looking a lot happier now. Now that he's in... Well, I mean, I guess he's definitely in the lead. He's got rid of the Naturia Beast for James, but no, no way to follow it up. Thomas just needs 1500 damage here and not restricted by any... It's You know what I think is like really interesting? In game one, Thomas won with pretty much exclusively runic cards. And now in game three here, he might win with exclusively <laughs> Naturia cards. I know there can be only one. I was going to say, that, that, that's also a pretty clutch... Uh, yeah, he's not played any runic cards this game. So, I mean, they do have synergy uh, between With and them, without each other, you know? But, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're perfectly happy playing by themselves, it seems. With a spell top deck from James... I think it was a monster he just picked up there. Was it a Pearl Lily? Let's see if uh, he can do anything here. The that big... Harpy's Feather Dust has just been in his hand. Is that? Oh, no, he's used Harpy's Feather Dust. Mean. Yeah, Lightning Storm. Yeah, I think he's probably recognizing how uh, it was really important to have established the... Uh, the yeah, I was uh, intrigued. I don't know what was going on with that Book of Moon. I thought he was going to use it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that he was yeah going to use the Lightning Storm, or maybe that the plan was to like, free Why? up. Why? He still hasn't used Lightning Storm. Well, there's a Baronda Fleur, so... I mean, you might as well bait it, right? Well, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's uh, the end of the duel. It's over. James has uh, unfortunately 